Hello all, my name is Krish Naik and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, in this specific video, we are actually going to create an end-to-end -end project of chatting with multiple PDF documents uh, using Google Gemini. Now, uh, one amazing thing about this entire project will be that we'll also be using Langchain and we'll try to understand how Langchain has bought some important ways of integrating Google Gemini Pro, you know, and probably developing amazing applications all together. So everything we will try to develop it. I know this will probably be uh, a lot many things. There are two main important features that we are also going to use in this. One is of uh, one of the vector embeddings technique. You can use any different different vectors embeddings. It is up to you. But today I will show you a vector embedding technique or uh, which has been uh, created by Facebook. OK, we'll talk more about it as we go ahead. Now, first of all, let me just go ahead and show you how the demo will be right the demo and then we will try to develop this entire application so over here uh, when i say chat with pdf i'm talking about chat with multiple pdf so what i will do i will go to browse let's say i have two important pdfs over here and these are the research paper one is attention is all you need and yolo right and i will just go ahead and open it now once i open it what we will do we will go ahead and click submit now what is going to happen is that this entire pdf files will be getting converted into vector embedding and it will be stored in local or in any database as such right i've already showed you how you can use pinecone database you can use cassandra db you know to store all these kind of vectors right now you can see over here i've got the status as done now this is one important functionality here what we did we uh, browse the file we uploaded it any number of pdfs you can upload it the limit size will be 200 mb per file so any number of files you can probably upload it and as soon as i probably clicked submit and process it has actually got converted into vectors now whatever question i ask about this specific pdf i will be able to retrieve it now as as said right i have uploaded this two pdf one is attention is all you need so you can go ahead and take up any question and probably ask to it. Okay. So let's say I will go ahead and ask what is scaled dot product attention. Okay. So I will say what is scaled dot product attention. So let's see whether I will be able to get the response or not. So it is running over here. It has already been converted into vectors. So I hope I should be able to get some output over here. So let's see. Uh, so here you can see scaled product attention is a mechanism used in the transformer model for calculating the attention weights between different position in sequences so amazingly we are actually able to get the response not only that uh, i'll say please provide a summary about multi-head attention let's say and you can write any prompt that you want provide a summary about multiple head attention so i will just go ahead and you know submit it so you can probably see and many people have actually asked me krish how do i probably interact with multiple pdfs like they can be any number of pdfs over here i've even tried with 10 to 15 different kind of pdfs over here so here you can see the reply is multi-head attention is a technique used in transformer model to improve its ability to attend uh, the different parts of the input sequence now this is with respect to attention pdf i also have yolo pdf so let's uh, ask okay provide a detailed summary i will just go ahead and write provide a detailed summary summary about walk 2007 error analysis so i will go ahead and end, uh, press enter and i hope i should be able to get the response now this is the entire demo but again creating uh, the entire application will help you learn multiple things over here so we'll go ahead and talk about it as we uh, go step by step now here you can probably see you have got the answer also and you'll be able to see that you're getting the entire result okay so let's go ahead and now develop this application i will completely start from scratch as i said that we are also going to use this facebook ai similarity search files um, this is uh, whenever you work with vector embeddings you can probably use this you can also use chroma db if you want but uh, in this particular video i've already used in one of the project of chroma db but let's go ahead and now use this files so guys now let's go ahead and develop this project step by step please follow all the steps that i'm specifically telling you uh, and uh, the best thing is that we'll try to keep it much more modular we'll try to use a front-end application a back-end application 
will try to see that how when a vector embeddings is basically created how you can store it in your local or you can probably if you have an option you can also go ahead and store it in any database as such okay so first of all as usual what i will do is that i will go ahead and open a terminal okay see guys whenever you probably start it right now you always need to create a new environment whenever you want to probably start a project okay I've already created an environment called as VENV, okay? But I, here I will give you a command how you can actually create an environment, okay? So for that, you need to write conda create minus P VENV and then you have to probably use, this is my environment name, VENV. And here, Google Gemini Pro, it works well with at least Python that is greater than 3.9, okay? So here I will probably use 3.10. So as soon as you write this, and just press enter what will happen is that an environment will get created on the name of vnv okay so please do these steps i know see i'm not showing you completely from uh, executing the command because i've already done that in my previous videos right so you don't have to do again and again and wait till that entire steps actually happen in this video okay so once this vnv environment is created we need to go ahead and write conda activate this specific environment that is VNV, okay? Because inside this environment only, I will go ahead and probably install all the libraries. So these are the first two steps that you really need to follow. One is create the environment. So if for that, you can write conda create minus P VNV. Um, then you can give the Python version, Python double equal to 3.10, okay? As I said, Google Gemini Pro works well with uh, Python version greater than 3.9 plus, okay? Now the second thing that we will go ahead and do is that create our environment variable, okay? So here I have to use Google API key. I have already shown you how you can use Google API key. Just go to makersuit google.com slash API key. So this is the website that you really need to go. makersuit.google.com slash app slash API key. Just click on this create API key in a new project. As soon as you click it, you can copy the API key and you can paste it over here. And that is the same thing that I've actually done over here. So here is the same API key, I have pasted it, okay? And the name that I'm actually giving is Google underscore API underscore key, okay? So this is the second step. This is my environment variable. Without this, I will not be able to use Google Gemini Pro, okay? Google Gemini Pro. <clears throat> now the next thing is that I will go ahead and install all the libraries that will be required for this specific use case. So I will go ahead and write step by step and what all libraries I will be requiring. As I said, I'll be requiring Streamlet. I'll be requiring Google Generative AI. This is for Google Gemini Pro. I will be requiring Python.env yeah, to load all the environment variables. I will be requiring Langchain. Why? Because we need to read the PDF. Langchain has a lot of functionalities to read the PDF. PDF and for again reading the PDF also we have something called as pi PDF 2 if you want you can use chroma DB but right now in my use case I will go ahead and use five CPU okay five GPU will also come but right now I'm going to use CPU because I have less number of files if you have more files you want to do parallel processing you can use five GPU now this will be the another important library that you will probably be using <coughs> That is nothing but Langchain Google underscore uh, Langchain underscore Google underscore Gen AI. So this basically means that with the help of Langchain, you will be able to access the APIs of Google Generative AI. Okay. So these are my important libraries that I will be requiring for this project. Now what we will do, we will go ahead and write pip install minus r requirement dot txt. So once I do this, you can probably see that I have already done the installation. So it is showing requirement already satisfied. The main reason is that you should not waste much time in this two steps. So that is the reason I have already done this and I have, I'm proceeding with it. Okay. Now this is done. I'm good with the requirement.txt, my API key, my uh, API key is ready. Everything is ready. Now let's go ahead and do the coding. And this time we will try to do it completely from scratch. We'll try to understand what all things are there. Okay. So first of all, I, as I said, I will go ahead and import streamlet as ST. So streamlet is done. Now, along with this, I will also be using from pi, from pi PDF to, okay. Import PDF reader. 
PDF reader. Okay, so this is the libraries that I will also be using because PDF reader with the help of PDF reader, we will try to read all the documents. Okay. And uh, apart from this, what I will do is that uh, there are some important uh, uh, libraries that we need to import with respect to LangChain. Okay. So what all important libraries that we are going to import? First of all, I will go ahead and paste it over here. Okay. So from splitter, I'm going to use recursive character text splitter. Uh, as you know that <clears throat> from uh, what we need to do as soon as we read the PDF, as I said that we need to convert those into vectors. So uh, Google generative AI, like basically the Gemini Pro also provides you an embedding technique. Okay, so for that, I will write from Langchain, Langchain underscore uh, Google underscore gen AI import <coughs> Google generative AI embeddings okay so we are going to specifically use this uh, from google langchain underscore google dot underscore don't worry about this warnings it will go off as soon as we execute for the uh, one time okay then along with that i will go ahead and import from google generative ai as gen ai okay so this is done because i'm going to use this generative ai functionalities only now <clears throat> along with this uh, i will be importing four different libraries and i will explain you everything step by step okay so one is fias this is for the vector embeddings uh from langchain dot vector stores we'll try to create that then langchain google gen ai also has chat google generative ai okay so this i will try to make you understand why we are specifically using this then from langchain dot question answer we are importing load qa chain so this basically helps us to do the chat and any kind of prompts also i want to define so for that also i am importing this langchain dot prompts import prompt template and finally i'm also going to import dot env load dot env so this is specifically to load all the environment variables so these are some of the imports now <clears throat> i will go ahead and write load underscore dot env by this what will happen is that you will be able to see the environment variable okay and then finally i will write gen ai dot configure because i need to configure my api key from google gemini so i will write os dot get os dot get env and here i will go ahead and write google because that is the same thing api key <clears throat> so what we have done over here is that I'm conferring the API key with respect to whatever Google API key we have loaded in this .env file or we have put them in this .env file. Now understand one thing. <clears throat> I hope you have visualized the demo part, right? In that demo part, you could see there was a left side where we have, uh, we got some place to upload the PDF and convert it into a vectors. And in right, right side, there was a text, right? Now in the left side, as soon as we upload a PDF, we should be able to read the PDF. And then whatever data is then inside the PDF, we should be able to give it, right? So for that, what I will do, I will create a definition. I'll, I'll create a function and I'll write get underscore PDF underscore text. Okay. Now in this case, whatever will be my PDF underscore docs, right? Whatever document I'm uploading it. Now here I will go ahead and create a text variable and I will say for PDF in pdf underscore docs right so what i'm saying i'm i'm just saying that okay read all the pdf pages in this particular pdf underscore docs and i will go ahead and read this with the help of pdf reader right so pdf reader i hope i have okay i have imported it over here so this will basically be my pdf reader so pdf reader will be responsible in reading this specific pdfs okay now, as soon as it probably reads this PDF, in PDF, multiple pages will also be there, right? So the main important internal component will be that soon as we read a PDF using PDF reader, it will be able to get the details of all the pages. So that basically means this PDF reader will be in the form of list. So what I will do, so I will go ahead and say from page in PDF reader, okay? So I'm going to probably read all the pages inside that. So I will write dot pages. And after this, I will go ahead and say text plus is equal to 
page dot extract text. So if you go ahead and write extract text, that basically means from this particular page, we are going to extract all the details, all the text ins uh, inside that. Okay. So once we do this, then what we'll do? Finally, we'll go ahead and return the text. So this is perfect, right? So this steps in short is saying that we read the PDF, we go through each and every pages and we extract the text. So this is the first information that we want. Okay. Because later on we will try to get this text. And now as usual, what we'll do, we will create another function. As soon as we get this text, I will divide this text into chunks, smaller chunks. So I will write get underscore chunks. Okay. Step by step, we'll, we will try to do this. Please, you really need to follow all these steps because once you follow this, so this will be generic for all the PDF files with respect to whatever application we developed in generative AI. Okay. So here I'm going to give my text. So this will be my another function. And here I will go ahead and write text underscore splitter. Okay. As you know, we have used recursive uh, character text splitter. We have imported it over here, right? So we are going to use this. And I'm saying, hey, make the chunk size of 1000. Instead of 1000, I'll say 10,000 and overlap since I have a very big PDF. So here I'll say my chunk overlap will be 1000. Okay. So overlapping can basically happen. So here, what is basically happening? I have the entire text and I want to divide those texts into smaller chunks of this particular size of 10,000 words, I guess, or 10,000 tokens. And they can be an overlap of 1000. Okay. So that I get a detailed summary of any questions that I specifically ask. Okay. Now, once this is done, then I will go ahead and write text splitter dot split underscore split underscore text. And I will give this specific text over here. Okay. So I'm taking this particular text and splitting based on this information that I specifically have. And then after this, I will go ahead and return my chunks. Perfect. So <clears throat> this was my PDF. I got the text. I divided the text into chunks. Now the main thing will be that I'll take this text chunks, whatever chunks I have, and I'll convert that into vectors, right? So here I will say definition get vector store. And here I will go ahead and write text underscore chunks. Okay. Whatever text chunks I'm specifically getting. And here I'm going to upload my embeddings, embeddings, which embeddings that I have used over here, Google generative AI embeddings. So I'll copy this and in Google generative AI embeddings, if you see the documentation, there is a model, which is basically called as inside the models folder, which is nothing but embedding 001. Okay. So I'm going to use this embedding technique. Okay to probably do the embedding again in Langchain also you have different embeddings in open AI also you have different embeddings but right now I want to use an embedding which is completely free for everyone to use it from hugging face also you can do it but Google generative AI embeddings is already providing you so many features so why to go with others and pay money so here I will go ahead and write vector store is equal to fires dot from underscore text okay so I'm going to See, when I probably create this embedding, I have already imported files, right? So files is already here. Files from text and I will say, take all these text chunks and embed according to this embeddings that I have initialized. Okay, that's it. The embedding technique. So this way, it is basically creating the vector store. Now this vector store can be saved in a database. It can also be saved in a local environment, right? So what I will do for right now, I will go ahead and write vector store dot save and I will say local. And here I will say fires underscore index. Okay. Fires underscore index. <clears throat> now fires underscore index over here shows you that I'm going to save this entire information in local, right? So this will be the folder that will be created. And inside this folder, I'll be able to see my vectors, right? In some format, which is not readable. Okay. So you'll also be able to see a pickle file so that whenever I ask a question to those vectors, I should be able to get the information. So these are the three steps. First, we got the PDF, then we converted that into chunks, and then we finally divided that into a vectors. Okay. Now I will go ahead and write definition get conversational 
chain okay so now i'm going to basically use this get conversational chain and here i'm going to define my prompt i'll define my prompt template and let me provide some meaningful prompt okay so i will say i'll give this question see so this is my question answer the question as detailed as possible from the provided context and make sure to provide all the details if the answer is not in the provided context just say answer is not available in the context don't provide the wrong answer so this is the information that i've actually used in the prompt template i'm saying that you need to behave like this you need to uh, uh, act like a, a person who knows how to read pdf and all okay so this is my first step with respect to that and uh, uh, after this uh, we will see the next step what it is going to happen okay now this is my prompt template that i have actually created now i will go ahead and create this particular function that is chat google generative ai and here i'm going to specifically use model which is my gemini pro i hope this is everyone is familiar with it i'm going to initialize my model google chat generative chat google generative ai gemini pro and here i'm going to specifically use some temperature and let's say the temperature that i'm going to use is 0.3 okay then obviously i've created prompt so i am going to use the prompt template which is available in langchain and i will write template is equal to prompt template okay and you know what are the input variables right so if you go ahead and define my input variables it will be in the form of list and there are only two one is context and the second one is specifically called as question okay i think it should be question yeah question context and question okay so these are my information with respect to the prompt template and this will basically be my prompt i'll divide this into prompt so i have to probably create my prompt now once we complete this <clears throat> once this is done i will go ahead and create my chain so it will be load queue chain and inside this i will use model whatever model that i have actually specifically defined and i'm going to use the chain type as stuff because i also need to do internal text summarization okay so this chain type stuff documentation chain will actually help us to do that and i will go ahead and give my prompt okay done perfect so this looks good and finally let's go ahead and return this chain so this is what is basically going to happen with respect to get conversational chain okay so this is basically all the functionality it is going to take we are going to load the gemini pro model we are going to create our template and then we are going to get the chain okay <clears throat> now finally with respect to the user input like as soon as i probably define or write in the text something should happen right so here you go so here you can see i've created a user input so this will basically go with my user question okay um uh, if you probably go ahead and see this is my embeddings that i am loading then i load the fires index from the local okay this is basically loading see at the end of the day when i give any information in my text input right i will say hey tell me about the summary of this particular topic from that particular pdf right already that pdf is converted into vectors so it is already stored in the fires index right so that is the reason we are loading fires right we are loading this fires index from the local right and then we are trying to do the similarity search based on the user question right and then we are calling as soon as we do the similarity search what we call we call this function right after doing the similarity search. so th by this we will be getting the chain back and then we get the response and finally we display the response over here okay these are the steps in user input so this is specifically related to our text box what is basically happening in the text box okay so again i'll tell you first of all we give the question then what will happen as soon as we give the question it will do the similarity search on all the fires index fires vectors that is basically created and then we go with the conversational chain i get the conversational chain and then we go to the response here in the response we give the chain input documents as docs which is basically based on the new similarity search and question is basically my user question <laughs> and finally we get the response <clears throat> now quickly what we will do we will create our streamlit app okay so let me go ahead and create my definition as main function because this will basically have my streamlit app 
so here let me go ahead and probably do this and again i've used chat gpt okay to probably develop the front end so here chat with multiple pdf let's go ahead and write multiple pdf okay then st dot header chat with multiple pdf again using gemini user question is st dot text in ask a question from the pdf file if user question then user input see if i am giving this specific question then this function should get executed automatically that basically as soon as i write the question over there in the prompt and i press enter then it should basically execute this okay but there will be also a sidebar where i need to upload the pdf and convert it into vector so that is the reason this particular code is there right with sidebar then st st dot title menu then upload your pdf an uploader button and i'm saying that as soon as we submit the button we call get pdf text then we got get the text chunks and finally we get get vector store so this function that you will be seeing this three function get pdf text get text chunk get vector store it is only for making sure that your file index is created right so that is the reason it is given in the sidebar and there we upload the file and we process it okay that is what we are specifically going to do in that particular case so this is done very simple i think i hope everybody is familiar with this and finally i will go ahead and execute it so let's go ahead and done i will say hey if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main i'll call this main function now quickly let me go ahead and run this i think it should work absolutely fine so i will go ahead and write <coughs> streamlet run app dot py so let me just go ahead and call this okay now see this is the left side right i gave a browse button as soon as i submit it then what will happen this entire code will be called right one by one function will be called which function will be called first get pdf text will be called then get text chunk will be called then vector store as soon as i do the vector store you will be able to see here right now nothing is there no file index nothing is there okay now i will go ahead and browse it i will select both the pdf now see as soon as i submit and process so it is running processing now here you will be able to see one folder that is file index now it has index.file so obviously you cannot read it and there is one index.pl pickle right so this file index will be my vector where the vector search similarity will be done all this information can also be stored in the database okay uh, as said right this can also be stored in the database and it can probably be called now this is done now here i will go ahead and ask a question now my question will be so let's say uh, provide a summary of provide a detailed summary of and i'll paste it now see as soon as i press enter now where it will go it was this function right see over here as soon as i press enter if user question i press enter then it will call this function that is nothing but user input then here embedding model will be called then we'll load the file index then it will do the similarity search and it will find out the chain and based on the chain it will provide me the response okay response of output text so uh, okay so let me just reload this i think uh, i did not press enter or what i don't know provide a summary of i will press enter okay file index is already there let's see i think we should be able to see some chat <clears throat> yes here you are able to get it right so guys i hope you like this particular video this was it right uh, an amazing end to end project now you are able to see chat with multiple pdf using gemini and i've shown you how you can use with langchain how you can use with file index and all you can also do it at chroma db so i hope you like this particular video this was it from my side i'll see you all in the next video thank you take care have a great day bye bye